In this screencast, we'll be discussing how to create a site suitability analysis for wind turbines in Southern California. The first step is to understand what criteria the suitability analysis should be based on, i.e. what factors affect wind turbine output and placement, and then download the data. Of utmost important is wind speed. This data can be downloaded by state on the National Renewable Energy Laboratory's website seen here. Um, next is air density, which is important for turning the turbine blades. This data isn't directly available on the internet as far as I could tell, so it must be calculated for from air pressure, which can also be calculated from altitude, um, and air temperature, um, as seen in this equation right here. Altitude data can be downloaded as DEMs, off of the USGS Earth Explorer and as seen here and temperature can be downloaded from NO, the NOAA's uh, weather station search tool which seems to be down at the moment. Finally there are certain areas that wind turbines just can't go such as where other wind turbines are at the moment, um, urban areas and roads, national parks, uh, and important bird areas since they are a large hazard for migrating birds. Uh, the California Audubon Society has this data. The first thing to um, be done with the data is interpolate the temperature data from NOAA um, as it comes in CSV format to get a raster from the point data. Um, so you can see the point data here, the XY data, and the interpolation that was done to get the raster data um, as seen in behind the points here. Next, the raster calculator must be used to calculate air density from our given data. Um, the DEM mosaic um, of Southern California can be turned into air pressure um, as they are very closely correlated, negatively correlated, um, and the conversion is given by a simple equation. So the DEM raster can be input into the raster calculator uh, and converted into air pressure very simply. Next, the air density can be calculated by dividing the air pressure raster by the interpolated temperature raster times the gas constant, which is a constant. Um, that gave us the air density. Um, raster. This raster is then reclassified uh, to a 1 to 7 scale, which where 1 is um, low air density and 7 is high air density um, to match the 1 to 7 scale of the wind speed raster as seen here that the National Renewable Energy Laboratory gave us. Then the wind speed and air density rasters are weighted based on importance, essentially um, multiplied by a percentage. Um, wind speed here was multiplied by 0.7 or 70% and air density was multiplied by 30% uh, because wind speed is more important than air density. And then they're added together, together uh, to give us the score for the whole region. That score can be seen here. Finally, this score raster was extracted um, and filtered using the raster calculator um, uh, to only show those cells with a 5, 6, or 7, um, the highest three scores possible. That can be seen. That can be seen right here. Potential turbine locations um, were then placed on based on this analysis. So you can see if zooms in here that there are scores of five and six. Um, scores of seven were very rare. There were only 35 cells that had a um, "Quote unquote superb," as defined by the National Resource uh, uh, National Renewable Energy Laboratory, um, as superb. Uh, potential wind turbine locations were then placed based on this layer's analysis, 
um, as seen here. Um, after this, a viewshed analysis was capture was um, done um, in order to make sure that urban areas um, could not directly see wind turbines. A lot of people have grievances with having turbines um, in their backyard because they think it makes the landscape look ugly. And a buffer analysis was also completed um, so that uh, and, and no sites were chosen that were within two and a half kilometers um, of an urban area because there, have, there are complaints of um, people essentially going crazy um, by being too close to wind turbines and hearing the low low whir of the turbines. Um, this is the um, view shed analysis where the red indicates um, no uh, cannot see the um, uh, turbines and green indicates that the turbines can be seen. The selection was refined once again based on the buffer and the view shed um, to give us uh, the final suitable location for potential wind farms. We chose Santa Barbara um, over the rest of these locations. They turned out to be clustered, very clustered. Um, here is um, a cluster in the Imperial County in San Diego um, region. Here's a cluster in Riverside, as well as the big cluster in Kern, um, there exist a lot of, um, in, in some, in Los Angeles County, but in these three clusters, there exist a lot of um, already existing wind turbines, many, many existing wind turbines, and the only um, untapped place uh, is here in Santa Barbara. So there are no, um, no wind turbines existing there right now, but the suitability is very good. There are even some sevens, uh, scores of seven. Um, this dark blue right here um, that can be seen. So this was the site that was chosen um, for the best uh, wind farm. Um, then these sites were rendered in QGIS um, into 3D using the QGIS 2 3JS exporter. I hope this gives you an idea of the geospatial spatial processes that go into wind turbine site suitability analysis.